All right, uh, today we're going to talk about factoring trinomials where their a equals 1. And what I mean by a is trinomials in their standard form are written, uh, that is quadratic trinomials, are written like this. a, your coefficient to x squared, plus b, your coefficient to x, plus c, your constant. And so we're going to factor those. And then we're going to solve them. And you know you need to solve them when they're equal to something. And so this one is set equal to zero, and this one is set equal to zero. So let's focus on number one first. And so what I'm going to do is find the factors of that last term, C, that also have a sum of the second term, 5. And so 1 times 4 equals 4, and 2 times 2 equals 4. When I add them together, 1 plus 4 equals 5, 2 plus 2 equals 4, so I want to select the 1 plus 4 deal, and so what I'm going to do is create what I call the double bubble, or what you can call two factors, and you can say, well, x plus 1, where did I get the 1 from? The 1 is from this 1 right here, times the quantity of x plus 4. And where did I get the 4 from? The 4 is from right there. And so you su successfully factored that out right there. Let's look at our next problem. I have a, con a constant of 24. And so I'm trying to find um, the factors of 24 that will equal 10. Well, I know 8 times 3 is 24. I know 6 times 4 is 24. And 1 times 24 and so forth. If I add the 8 and the 3 together, I get 11. If I add the 8 and the 3 together, I get 11. If I add 6 and 4 together, I get 10. So I'm going to select the 6 and 4. And so I'm going to create my double bubble. And I'm going to have x plus 6 times the quantity of x plus 4. Now remember, you can only use this method when a equals 1. And so since there is no a here, the coefficient there is 1. It's implied. Let's take a look at if we want to solve them. So if I want to solve them, I'm still going to look at that last term here, 18. And I'm going to look at um, the factors of 18 that give me a sum of 9. So 2 times 9 is 18. 6 times 3 is 18 and so forth. 2 plus 9 is 11. 6 uh, plus 3 is 9. You also have to look at... Um, <laughs> Subtraction every now and again, but here we know it's addition, so we add the two. And so I can say, well, that's k plus 6 times the quantity of k plus 3 equals 0. And if you remember from the last thing we did, if you use the zero product property here, I set both of these equal to 0. k plus 6 equals 0, and k plus 3 equals 0. And in this case, k equals a negative 6. And in this case, k equals a negative 3. So you solve for k in this trinomial there. Let's take a look at number 7. In number 7, I'm going to find the factors of a positive 9. And when I add them together, I get a negative 6. Uh, 1 times 9 is 9. Um, 3 times 3 is 9. If I subtract these, uh, I'll either get an 8 or a negative 8, if I add them, I'll either get a 10 or a negative 10, and I don't want either one of those. If I add these, I'll either get a 6. If I subtract them, I get 0. Um, now, I need a negative 6, so what I'm going to do is make both of these negative. Now, if I add both of those together, then I will get a negative 6, and so I'm going to put those into the factor, into the grouping symbols. I'm going to have x minus 3 times the quantity of x minus 3, set them both equal to 0. This one would equal x equals 3, and this one would be x equals 3 as well. They both equal 3. We call that a double root, and the reason why they're the same answer is because this is a perfect square trinomial, but we'll get into that later. But this answer is x equals 3 and x equals 3, but we can just simply say x equals 3. All right, do the rest of those problems on that sheet. Have a good day.